A very special edition of Peacock and Williamson, an old friend, the great Mike Sando joining us because it is a QB tiers day. We're talking quarterback tiers as voted on by important folks around the league, coaches and executives. What stands out? How big are the tiers? Where are the tiers going? Who's going up? Who's going down? All in today's Peacock and Williamson. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look at the NFL on the field and in the front office with elite breakdowns to next level analysis and in-depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson, and it starts now. Welcome to the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock alongside Matt Williamson, as always, a very special guest with us on today's episode. Appreciate all the everydayers out there. Make sure you are subscribed on YouTube or wherever you are listening to this podcast. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. All you got to do is visit FanDuel.com slash on. To get started and today's very special guest the great mike sando of the athletic at sando nfl he used to be a regular when this podcast was called locked on nfl we've since branched off to the peacock and williamson nfl show don't get to talk to you as often as we'd like now mike but uh, always a pleasure to talk to you especially on this day big day you dropped the qb tears on everybody it's great to be back yeah matt williamson and i go back a long time to espn days together and then the other three of us did do some shows too so it's good to be back so speaking of the espn days how long have the tears been going on because i've i've read every yeah. sentence you've written yeah. on them well this is the 11th year so we started 11. in 2014 and it's funny to go back and look because the the tears and even the definitions of the tears were kind of taking shape then I think my first year, I only had 26 voters because I wasn't as well connected. You know, I didn't mm -hmm. have as many uh, people that I had done this sort of thing with. And so it's really grown as I've kind of grown in, in my, uh, you know, career a little bit. And it's been, it, it, it's still the most fun thing for me, the most fun project of the year. So are we in the golden age of quarterback play? Because I think the biggest standout thing to me when I opened up the quarterback tiers uh, wasn't the size of tier one. It was the size of tier two. And then Absolutely. how many players just outside of tier two, plus some young players that teams are hoping and expecting will jump yeah. into the top couple of tiers. It, it, it's half the league and maybe more than half the league, depending on how you look at it, Mike. So uh, were, were you surprised by how many quarterbacks that coaches and executives around the league really liked? Well, I'm surprised that there's only three in tier one. I mean, that's that's the lowest number we've had in, I think, since 2016. But hmm. I think what you're getting at, golden age of quarterbacks, probably a golden age of, hey, this is our quarterback. How can we play to his strengths? And I think that has evolved in the league from, hey, we're looking for a certain type of guy and we're going to keep looking until we find him and we've got a set offensive system and, and that's the way it's going to be. I think we've seen in the last 15 years – you know, when Carolina gets Cam Newton, they build the whole offense for Cam Newton instead of asking him to do things that he couldn't do. Or Lamar Jackson, who, you know, some predict, I don't know, is he going to, is the NFL's offense going to be for him? No, they have built an offense for him. <laughs> they changed the offense to make him, to get the best out of him. So I think there's probably more better situations that way in terms of the coaches amending what they do, making it easier for the quarterbacks, uh, uh, and then, you know, the rules uh, certainly have helped make it easier too. these guys aren't getting hit as much and, and that sort of a thing. And there's more guys you can kind of make a case for, Hey, we can win with this guy. So I think great examples of that in similar systems are BP's guy, Purdy versus Tua, and they're really close in the ranks. And I don't hold it against them that they're quote system quarterbacks. I mean, system quarter, Ken Newton's a system quarterback. I mean, it just depends what system you put them around. But I found it interesting in the verbiage, verbiage, I don't think I said that word right, but anyway, that Purdy's considered more of the playmaker of the two, which leads me to, if I'm Purdy's agent, I'm starting with the Tua contract. You know, how do, how do people compare oh, and contrast those two? Yeah. Completely, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that Purdy, people feel like things have to be a little bit more perfect for Tua. That yeah. when 
when they are, when things are set up for him, he's amazing. I mean, he's really super accurate and he can run that offense that way. But as we saw, like when they played Kansas City in that international game last year, when it's a little bit off script or you're having to, you know, put it on his shoulders and now the run game isn't really something the defense is worried about. It didn't just look like it was tough. It, it, it looked bad, right? I mean, it really got off the rails where I feel like with Purdy, uh, he can scramble around and make something happen. He can fix a play a little bit better. Now he will take some chances too, you know, uh, with that, but I think you're not dead to rights when it goes wrong with Purdy as quickly as you are with uh, with Tua, and that's probably why Purdy, you know, surged past Tua. Tua is at the very top of tier three, still going to get paid in that group, but you know, you feel like they need a little bit more help. Mm-hmm. Purdy's agent definitely bookmarked your article on the quarterback <laughs> here, Mike, and, and uh, it's something that. Uh, uh, I'm sure we'll come up in negotiations. A tier two quarterback and tier two quarterbacks are pretty expensive around the NFL, even though there's so many of them. And yeah, Brock's got guts and he's a playmaker. And he also climbed, he was tied for the highest climbers on this list with yeah. with Jordan Love. And uh, it's been pretty amazing to see how universally Jordan Love has become loved around the NFL when not that long ago, 12 months ago, we didn't really still know much about Jordan Love. I know. I, you wonder, is it too much, too soon to push him up into into the bottom of tier two? I mean, it's a pretty optimistic bet on him. He did, though, I think make progress as the season went along, had some big games and big spots, and, and did it with a really young supporting cast around him, too. You know, some of the things that were a little bit of an issue for Aaron Rodgers late in his career, their young receivers, looked pretty good for uh, Jordan Love. So uh, he may benefit, too, just from the idea that Green Bay's done it again, right? They They've... They replaced Favre. They have they done it now with Rodgers. Um, I thought I thought Love and Stroud were interesting this early to come up um, yep. that high into tier two, but they did play a whole season at least. Some of the other guys that have had to wait, like a Purdy, uh, a year ago, had had only had partial seasons. So there's something to be said for making it through a whole year, and I think that gives the voters a little bit more um, to go on and a feel like okay. Uh, I'm willing to bet on this quarterback. So the next biggest riser between besides those two was Baker Mayfield. And to me, and I'm curious if you got this sentiment yeah. as well, that one seems fragile to me. <laughs> like I, one big yeah. step forward could be yeah. another step back, you know? Yeah. There's probably a tighter range for Baker and he's going to move up and down in that based on the, on the year a little bit. Uh, but he's done it with two teams. I mean, he's had good years when he's been decently supported and healthy He's not a huge mo- needle mover who's, you know, you don't, he's, there's no wow factor necessarily mm-hmm. with him. But I think you feel like, uh, I think you, you feel like if he were to get in a good system for a number of years consistently, we might see him come to the top of tier three, right? And so remember for years, Cousins was kind of like go back and forth. He's at the very last guy in tier two or the top of three. That feels like where Baker could be to me. A uh, quick question about Aaron Rodgers because if I was he was tier one last year, was he not? Like every year, almost unanimous yeah. most years. And and so people around the league still clearly believe in him, but it's been a while since we've actually seen him perform at that tier one, tier two, even level. Real quick, that's yeah, one of my notes too, tiers. BP. Yeah, yeah, votes in four tiers. <laughs> I I have a note here, just Rodgers respect, and I think that goes back to even like his lean years in Green Bay, like the league in my opinion, and looks at him as like one of the best players of ever of all time and, and just gives him ultimate respect. Do you think that's accurate? I do, but this is a big shift to have 27 voters not put him in tier one uh, off of four. Are we doing that off of four snaps? Are we saying, hey, during those four snaps, he really showed a decline from tier yeah. one? Uh, <laughs> I think it's a little bit of, I think it's a little bit of, hey, he had this injury and he's been a little banged up and he's super old now, you know, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe you just can't take it to the bank that he's going to be amazing again. Uh, it wouldn't have surprised me, though, if he had gotten a, f- a few more, even a few more Tier 1 votes. But it, I think, don't you think a little bit of skepticism feels warranted at this stage? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, no doubt. Uh, to be honest with you, I, I think I, I think expect him to be a little further down just because he's so far removed from what we've seen, but the expectation is still there. And I'm sure people yeah, in the yeah. league 
uh, and I'm sure you've encountered this, Mike, in your conversations, is people within the league, and th this happens to me, and I'm sure it happens to Matt, because we do a lot of roster evaluation, and we have a lot of biases. With, we think about guys pre-draft, post-draft. I think it probably, probably a lot of biases with, with prior conviction on a player that a lot of folks believe what they already believed and don't want to change their opinion. Yeah, and then also one of the debates was uh... – okay, are we supposed to go back on evaluate what he was the last time we saw him play a full season versus what we think he's going to be right now and how much projection is going into this? Um, I thought one of the fun comments in the piece was from somebody who voted Rodgers in Tier 1 and said, those guys who didn't put him in Tier 1, are they from the 29 teams that would be upgraded at quarterback if he was their guy? <laughs> you know, And so there's still a real belief, in, yeah. like you said, in Rodgers that, that – um, you know, I think we just want to see him play at this point. You know, yeah. He's, he's yeah. a little bit like Kyler Murray to me. There's just been a narrative around these two guys without them actually playing a lot of ball uh, for a while. I want to see them play. Next, uh, I want to talk next about some fallers on this list and the QB tiers. And uh, what are some of the best quotes you got from some of the folks around the league as well? Next. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And you've heard us talk so much about FanDuel, and there's a reason they're America's number one sports book, and it's because offers like this. And football fans, I'm talking to you, and you're going to want to listen in on this because now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet just $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, which I have and I love, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game all you need is a Google account and a current form of payment. You can cancel any time and then bet on all the NFL futures. Who's going to win the next Super Bowl? Which one of these quarterbacks might win MVP this season? Offensive, defensive, rookies of the year, and so much more. Of course, every other sport you can imagine at FanDuel. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to download America's number one sports book. That is FanDuel.com slash locked on. I know you had something, Matt, so so go ahead. Yeah, you mentioned Kyler Murray, and I thought Kyler Murray and especially Lawrence, they both were first overall picks, in my opinion, are the ones most likely to jump to Tier 2. Do you think I'm on the right track there? Yeah, I totally do. Uh, okay. uh, now, certainly we could see some of those, you know, maybe there's a speculative guy in Tier 4, you know, that has mm -hmm. a talent, an Anthony Richardson who hasn't played much, that sort of a thing. But I, I agree with you. I feel like... Uh, those guys certainly have the talent. Uh, they played at that level at certain times in the past, and really we're just waiting to see how it comes together for them um, this year. With I have some optimism for Kyler Murray. Uh, Me too. I, I think he's just, you know I think with what they're doing there and the, the personnel they've had, like uh, I think we might see a little bit of a resurgence of him. You would hope you would see that with Trevor Lawrence, but I'm not sure if there's just something off with Jacksonville either. We'll see. Maybe it was just a uh, a bad finish to last season with the injuries and whatnot. But um, for whatever reason, I just kind of want to need to see it with them before I believe it. Let me piggyback off that. I apologize. Cause that, there was a comparison in here that I've made lately between Lawrence and Herbert ultra yeah. talented and they kind of look the same, but is there something missing or are they the demonstrative mm -hmm. grab you by the face mask, Dan Marino types, or are they just in bad organizations, <laughs> you know? That part of it is a huge component. Now, the personalities are some of it, too. But, like, Justin Herbert's had a bottom five defense. So yeah. there's not that many guys. Mahomes can overcome that, you know. Uh, but there's not that many guys who are going to do a lot better than he has done in that situation. He's still basically a 500 quarterback with a bottom five defense. So um, that colors it. And then... Jacksonville with the whole Urban Meyer thing, and you just look at what Jacksonville's record is overall since whatever the, the owner bought the team. You know, it really is an, a little bit of an uphill fight. That being said, the talent in Jacksonville is not terrible. So, no. Um, and I don't think the coaching, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a terrible organization right now. You know, just with the leadership mm -hmm. that they have, it should we should get some good results. So kind of going back to the original thought of the golden age of acceptable, pretty good quarterback play, however you want to word it around the NFL teams, uh, working with the the talent that they have and, and utilizing their quarterbacks to the best of their ability. This many guys at, in tier one and two, 
especially tier two. And then the top of tier three, you could argue those are tier two guys or players that could jump in. So now you start to get into the twenties and you think, well, that means that the other teams must be at a huge disadvantage at quarterback. And I think about teams like the New York giants and maybe Matt's Pittsburgh Steelers. And it's like, can you make up for being one of the only handful of teams that really you don't feel great about the quarterback position, the most important position on the field. Yeah. No, you have a you have a much lower ceiling. So in those types of teams, even like a team like Pittsburgh, really good, you know, has been a good organization. They, Tomlin just sort of wakes up and goes nine and eight, right? Uh, how much better than that are you going to be? Like, how are you really going to go deep in the playoffs? Uh, you could see them with a good defense and Russell Wilson playing efficient ball, and Justin Fields being used by Arthur Smith properly in packages, or maybe he takes over at some point. You could see that type of a team, maybe going ten and seven. And maybe having a chance to win a wild card game, right? That's about, That's about where it. it taps out. Mm -hmm. That's it. You, it's hard to see it going more than that. You're going to be going against one of those top quarterbacks. So, last thing I have for you, because I know you need to run, but we mentioned some fallers. The guy that I'm shocked that didn't fall further is Deshaun Watson. Yeah, I, I'll buy that too. So, Deshaun, who still got 13 votes in tier two. That and 35 in tier three, now two in tier four. He comes in under Tua, Lawrence, Kyler Murray. And so, what you're saying is basically these four, maybe these three guys that are directly under him Baker Mayfield, Derek Carr, Geno Smith you might put those guys above Deshaun at this point. And I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really argue that he hasn't played well and he hasn't played. I mean, and how do you I'm trust not him? super optimistic. Like how, how could you trust that this is going to be good? Um, I think the only thing that helps him is that, hey, he was at one time, you know, in that tier one and a half kind of conversation. But that was five uh, years ago. <laughs> I know. I know. So this is I feel like this tier three is like a snapshot of guys that are falling like they're they're in the process yeah, yeah. of falling. And Russell Wilson would be there, Wilson. too. Like Wilson. Like if we do this a year from now, how much would you be willing to bet? Wouldn't you bet that Russell Wilson's not even going to be in tier three next year if we do this? It's funny. We talked about this on my Steelers show, and we were like, if, if Wilson can be a solid tier three player for the Steelers this year, we'd take it. Yeah. You know, they haven't had a three yeah. guy in the law either. Yeah. I kind of feel like until proven otherwise, these guys are trending in a downward projection. Mm -hmm. They're more likely to, to be out of there. So it's really... You'd say last hope for Deshaun Watson even, but he's they owe him like $130 million. So. $64 million cap hit <laughs> or something, right? Maybe a few more hopes that were paid for there. I, <laughs> I wonder what would happen. Like, what if he was just terrible, played the whole year and was horrific this year? Like, what would you do? Like, you, you know, keep him on the roster and draft somebody? Could be like Wilson. I mean, the Broncos are paying yeah. his salary. It's not as bad, but geez. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> so the, the, the best and worst part of this Mike, is that you have the uh, the anonymous quotes. And you hear a quote and you think, gosh, I wish I knew who said that exact quote. But if you knew who said the quote, then you wouldn't be able to print it either. So I love that they are anonymous because at least you still get the quotes, right? And yeah, uh, and I'm careful with them because uh, you know there's ones that don't make it in there that are funny or whatever, but it's not really fair. And yeah. then I also try to balance it out. If you're going to let somebody do a criticism, then, in, then include, include something that from somebody else who said something, you know, that, yeah. that balances that out. I, I'm careful with that, but yeah, it is a fun part of it. There's, there's some good ones in there. Did you have a, a, a big quote that, that really hit this year for you? Cause I'm I know you hear a lot about it and you get people mad at you and it's like, these aren't my tier rankings guys. These, it, yeah. these yeah, yeah, not mine. And like, cause I'm yeah. sure Lamar Jackson got, and he kind of annually probably gets the biggest pushback from people because there's just certain people in the league that don't want to believe in his style of play for whatever reason, don't want to put him in tier one. So I'm sure that was a big pushback. Did you get a big pushback or a big reaction to a certain quote or a certain player this year? Well, so I do love the discussion around Lamar Jackson, but the, the most interesting pushback I got from uh, uh, once it was published was a lot of people were questioning whether Burrow should be up there after being hurt. Um, and so I wasn't anticipating that at all. I don't think mm. there's a lot to discuss there. I think he's really good. Um, I do love the discussion uh, around Lamar, who got closer to tier one than he's ever been. I feel like... So he did win the MVP. The he's won it twice. But yeah. you look at the... <laughs> right. But you, you look at, and I'd be curious what you think of this, Mac. So the, the, the 
The definition of tier one is carries his team each week. Team wins because of him. Expertly handles pure pass. No real holes in game. Well, the expertly handles pure pass. What that means is when the game gets reduced to when it is toughest for the quarterback. Our quarterback runs, our play action game, none of that works. It's not whether you can pass efficiently. It's whether it looks good any of the time when you absolutely have to pass. And that has been a situation they haven't been in as much, and he hasn't done as well. And we've seen that sometimes in the playoffs. I think it's one of the reasons they're, he's 2-4 and four in the playoffs and doesn't have anywhere near the stats that he's had in the regular season. So m- enough voters, just about enough voters, still put him in Tier 1 anyway. I'd be curious, Matt, is he an easy Tier 1-er for you, or do you think that that peer pass component is important enough, and is that a valid criticism of him at this stage? Not an easy tier one but the one thing I would add is his winning percentage in the regular season is like the same as Tom Brady's. I mean, it's like one of the best of all time. And I think he hits all the other criteria so strong that that one category yeah. is good enough that it, I would still give him a yeah. one. Yeah. And I would say half, almost half the voters did that. Now, when you talk about that record, if we stack all of the quarterbacks, which I've done, um, and you rate them by how good their defense and special teams play, he, yeah, he gets right. the best support of anybody. No doubt. And so, but like just Rivers Herbert was the worst a, ever, I remember used to yeah, do. But yeah. Justin Herbert is a 500 quarterback, and he's a bottom five defense special teams. Mm-hmm. So uh, Lamar is an 80, 75, 80% winner with the number one. So if we put them both at number 16, I think their, their records would be more similar. Yeah, no, it's, it's great. I love when you do that, yeah. And so... So that's really – he's had such extreme great support from defense and special teams without making deep pushes into the playoffs that I think that people who really, uh, you know, parse that out want to see him do that more, and that's why it's a little bit more of a split than you would think, and that's why we have a – hey, we can have a media vote and, the MB, and go for the MVP. This, there's a little bit of a different nuance in this that makes for good discussion at a time when teams are more open than ever to building their offense around a quarterback who's a dual threat quarterback. That is Mike Sando. You can find the quarterback tiers at the athletic, always fun, a must read every single season as we get ready to go. And I can't wait for 2025 and Brock Purdy's March toward tier one next year. (laughs) Appreciate you joining the program, Mike, as always. Absolutely. Thank you. Always fantastic talking with Mike Sando of The Athletic. Uh, does a great job with the QB tiers. Always uh, creates such a stir around the NFL. You know the NFL's around the corner. The NFL season's around the corner when the quarterback tiers come out. The OG tier maker, by the way, Mike Sando, uh, at Sando NFL. Follow him on Twitter and uh, read all of his stuff. Great stuff at The Athletic uh, every day over there. Um, your biggest problem on the QB tiers list? Was it was it Lamar not being one? Maybe you know Stafford and Herbert and, and some of those guys that weren't in tier one. Was was there too much general love? Like sh- should tier two be a smaller tier, Matt? That's kind of my I, I honestly don't have many complaints or things that I would differ, but I would have we kind of mentioned it with Burrow. I have great respect for him, but their durability's got to be part of this. That I would have Allen clearly ahead of burrow like Allen almost is in a tier by himself mahomes is almost in a tier by himself and the tier two is just a little bulky for me you know i mean cousins purdy even hurts goff i mean some of those guys are pretty borderline for me tier two and i know loves the last one in tier two but I think he's ascending pretty rapidly, you know, where I'm not sure Cousins is, you know. And even if that line was put right above Brock Purdy, so say Jalen Hurts mm-hmm. at 11, Brock Purdy at 12, if the line was right between 11 and 12 and there was a smaller tier two and maybe another tier added, so there was more of a tier three that had the bottom tier two guys and the top tier three guys like Kyler Murray and, and yeah. Lawrence and Tua and Purdy and, you know, Cousins and Love, I, I think those guys kind of do all belong in the same tier right now. I, I tend to agree. Um, I had I had a bunch of questions for Mike. I wrote, you know, wrote him before the show. And my last one I didn't get to, which isn't super exciting, but I know that some of these guys we can be hard on. And I think Derek Carr qualifies, but I kind of feel like this is as low as Derek Carr can go. You know, tied for 20, bottom of tier three. I think he's a little bit more stable than that, and his environment didn't help him. 
Do you expect a big riser next year? It, you know, it, because, you know, tier four saw some of the rookies that struggled. We saw, you know, CJ Stroud's ascension last year already. So he's already high in, in tier two and he might be a tier one guy next year. Who knows? Uh, but Anthony Richardson and, and Will Levis are, you know, ranked tied for 26 on this list. They're tier four quarterbacks. Um, there are the rookie class this year with all three guys. It looks like are going to start week one in May and Williams and, uh, and Jaden Daniels. So who, who do you think is the big Knicks as well? I think I think it'll be four of them. And Knicks. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. 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 And, and, and uh, one of them's hurt. So, you know, there probably won't be a huge rise for JJ McCarthy. We're not going to know what he is. Maybe Sam Darnold's that guy that, that we're like, Oh yeah, Sam Darnold. He does the, the Baker Mayfield thing from last year. Yeah. You beat me to it on Darnold. Uh, I, I, First off, I'd be shocked if Richardson isn't higher. You know, like I just think that's an incomplete grade for him. That really he should be with the rookies because we we just don't know. And if I were in charge of grading him, if he, if Mike would ask me, I don't know how you put a fair grade on Richardson. Darnold to me would not shock me, and maybe it's a little bit of a fugazi. But at this time next year, whether he's in purple or black and gold or New York taking over Daniel Jones that he's like at the top of tier three, you know, after a real solid year, that would not blow me away. He's still surprisingly young and yeah. still physically talented. Uh, has he gotten some really good coaching the last couple of years? And, you know, you love Kyle Shanahan and Kevin O'Connell for him. Yeah. So he's got a tr the best, maybe wide receiver in the NFL to throw to this year. You know, if he's seeing the field clearly and in a more solid scheme and more well coached now for multiple seasons, and uh, I could see a jump. And to be honest with you, Sam Darnold doesn't have to jump that far. You know, it might be more difficult to get tier three votes than it is to jump in front of, uh, you know, Minshew, Fields, Daniel Jones. That's it. That's all he has to jump a veteran quarterback yeah. here. You know, and then he has to fight off all the young players we mentioned because still between him and tier three is Richardson and Levis and uh, Bryce Young. I, I think there's not I, I don't know what to think about Bryce Young. Almost unfairly, the situation's not great, and he nowhere to go but up. And like, yeah, nowhere to go but up. But I don't know if I expect him to go that high up. I, it's I, he's in an unfortunate. He concerns, right? he, he concerns me that there's a chance he lingers in this neighborhood, and they're in the market for a quarterback after this year. You know, in, in Carolina, especially with the nature of that organization. But I don't. Back to Darnold. I mean. Leaping Minshew and Fields and Daniel Jones, I think that's almost definitely going to happen. But I think he's going to go past the Cars and Mayfields and maybe even get to like Tua Land, like be at the top of tier three. Wow! So he could even jump. He not only pull a Mayfield, possible. jump Mayfield. I think I'll it's possible. Mayfield. <laughs> yep, yep. Same draft class, both top three picks from the class. If we have this conversation next year. I'm not predicting it, but I bet there's an argument for I would prefer Darnold to Mayfield. So that sounds like you're projecting a Derek Carr, maybe Baker Mayfield, maybe Deshaun Watson, Geno Smith, maybe Russell Wilson. Like that's the bottom of tier three. You're expecting probably those guys are going in the wrong direction next year's tiers. I don't know who's going up of the group. Right. You know, I think Wilson will play better for the Steelers than he did with Denver. It's just a better system, but he's mm -hmm. probably not going to leave tier three. I still think that's kind of the bottom car can go, but he probably won't leave tier three. You know, it does feel like cars, the one where the wheels could fall off. You think Fun not intended, but I like it anyway. Ah, nice <laughs> car with two arts. Yeah. And the uh, rookies, who knows? I mean, but right. I, I never, doubt any of them are where Stroud is at eight after one season. I mean, that's pretty lofty. It's the best ever rookie's ever done. Right. That's that's lofty, but I wouldn't be shocked if Caleb Williams is in tier two. From I wouldn't either. Early I wouldn't either. weapons he has, it's really set up for him to succeed right now. And I think he's really good on top of that. So mm -hmm. uh, that would be fascinating to see where the rookies end up. And uh, plenty of opportunity for at least four of those rookies that are going to be starting in week one for their teams, which is, uh, which is going to be a fun ride. All right. Real quick, I meant to ask Mike this. I assume he will because he's done it every year. But I think later this week or next week at this time, he puts out what every team has to face in terms of quarterbacks. Like, for example, if the Browns the Browns will play Burrow, so that's a, a Tier 1 guy they have to face twice. They'll play Lamar. That's a Tier 2 guy they have to play twice. Wilson's a Tier 3. You know what I mean? And they'll tell you, like, strength of schedule – quarterbacks on the docket which of course people get hurt but still 
Uh, I got one more for you real quick. Trevor Lawrence. He's tier three right now. Yeah. Does he make that ascension? I think Kyler Murray, you could kind of pair with him there. You know, Tua, I think we know where he's going to end up. And, you know, maybe it's a high tier three, low tier two sort of a grade. Um, I think we know Tua. I still feel like we don't know exactly what Trevor Lawrence and Kyler Murray are. And the ceiling is very high. Uh, and I feel like the floor is kind of where they're already at here. So, like, I, I would project them to, to jump tiers. And that would just make tier two even bigger. Yeah, yeah, I don't know who could leave tier two. I mean, I guess we could dig through that too, but Aaron Cousins, Rogers, maybe Cousins just comes to mind. Yeah. yeah, Cousins and Rogers, the older guys. Mm-hmm. But I mean, just looking at this, he only needed a couple votes to get into tier two to, to sway his way because he ended up with a 2.6 average. Lawrence, mm-hmm. I'm talking about, right? Where Love and Cousins made it into tier two with a 2.4 and a 2.5 average. That being said, I think I'd bet everything I own that Lawrence is tier two next year. Like I have that much faith in him, unless he gets hurt in week one or something crazy. The turnovers have been bad, but I mean, things like drops and lack of a running game and some stuff that hasn't gone his way. He's not been helped. But the thing is, is did, did his cast get better enough to really make a huge difference? for him? That is better than the back of his football card looks or, you know what I mean? Elevate despite that finally, which is one thing that I think, you know, Lawrence and, uh, uh, and Herbert, as we mentioned before, they they haven't been able to elevate despite things maybe not being great around them. Let me put it this way. This time next year, I will bet that Jacksonville's very happy with the contract they gave Lawrence. I think it's a good way to put it, and I totally yeah. agree. Because yeah. the way the money's going, too, it's just like... I I'll mean, bet on that guy. You look at uh, the Philadelphia Eagles, and they did two big contracts, and you got A.J. Brown got re-upped, and then Devontae Adams got paid, and it's 32 and 25 mil per... And by next spring, we might be thinking those were smoking deals. It's like, wow, they're paying their wide receivers more than any team in the NFL, and they love it. Speaking of the Eagles, I do have some slight concerns that Hertz could end up being at the top of Tier 3 as opposed to a stable Tier 2 guy. We're not that far away from where there are years that they could get out of the Hertz contract, Mm -hmm. by the way, too, because he's already in year two two or three of that contract by now, right? I'm kind of like the conversation we have with Sando about people are reluctant to put Lamar in tier one because when it comes down to pure passing, I don't know if Hertz has it. And I'll take Lamar as a pure passer over Hertz. Ooh, I can't wait to see how it plays out in 2024. Let us know about what you think about Mike Sando's quarterback tiers. And again, they're not Sando's. They are the league's quarterback tiers. Our coaches and executives Great article, make yeah. these quarterbacks. Always love Sandoz quarterback tiers every year. The OG tier maker for quarterbacks. Thanks, everybody, for making Peacock and Williamson your first listen every day. For your second listen, check out one of the other 200 podcasts here on the network. Your team is covered every day, no matter the sport. Locked on fantasy, locked on dynasty. Get ready for those fantasy drafts. Matt and I back tomorrow. Get those mailbag questions in this week, by the way, at BD Peacock, at Williamson NFL. Ton of news, cutdowns, and so much more to get to this week on Peacock and Williamson.